His father was a pioneer aviator, barnstormer, and air show performer. So it seems only natural that David was born loving to fly. But his mother hated airplanes, and almost anyone having anything to do with them, including his father at times. From day one, David knew something he loved always seemed to cause a fight. When he became a teenager, he was forced to transfer his passion from flying to automobiles. That kept the family's phone ringing off the hook. Miss McKenzie, your boy David's been out here hot rodding again. And it almost got him expelled from school for turning the chemistry lab into a still. An attempt at developing high-octane motor fuel. But it was after college. David was building a racing car. He realized he and automobiles had been nothing but trouble, and only one thing would really make him happy. He sold the dragster, sneaked out the back door, drove across the state line, and learned to fly. Quietly, of course. He bought an old Luscombe, and yep, when his mother got wind of it, buddy, she gave him a taste of the hatred his dad had endured for years. Not that he needed a reminder, but it was forever cemented into his psyche. If he was going to pursue his dream of flying, he'd always have to fight someone or something. As the dust began to settle, he met a girl, got married moved to Detroit and designed automobiles for the Ford Motor Company. He became an instructor, taught a number of people to fly, including several youngsters, built a Great Lakes biplane powered by a tank engine, and performed in air shows. Maybe the fighting for his dreams was finally over. But then David found out otherwise. This time, it wasn't with someone, but something. Almost dead, in a coma, and paralyzed, the real fighting began. Round one was waking from a coma and trying to learn to walk again. Round two began 11 months later. He got hit by a train on his way to outpatient therapy. Round three was building another airplane and fracturing a metatarsal in the process. Round four was losing a fight with his son's Volkswagen project, fracturing a leg and an arm. Round five was falling on the hangar floor and breaking again that same arm. But in round six, he rallied. With walking cane in hand and one leg shorter than the other, David went to Texas and bought a clipped wing tailor craft. He resumed competition aerobatics on an international level and returned to air shows. And that's where we are now. Some call it drive, others determination, some say guts. David maintains that it's really just the spirit and who knows where he and the spirit go next. He's just hoping he won't suffer any further physical stress in the process.